Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chico Salitingo from the Department of Commerce and Management, and I'm honored and delighted to welcome each and every one of you to Tetzel College's first virtual graduation day for the class of 2020. There's a beautiful quote by the Chinese philosopher Confucius that goes, the will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential, <clears throat> excuse me, these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. And dear students, this day, the 16th of November, 2020, marks an auspicious day, as today we celebrate your accomplishments, your hard work, your, de your determination, and your dedication to strive for excellence. Well done to each and every one of you. Joining us today is also a very special guest, Dr. Dolly Kikon, who is a senior lecturer in anthropology and development studies at the University of Melbourne. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Dolly Kikon, and thank you for being here with us today. Before we begin, just wanted to inform you that we may face a few technical issues in between, especially with regard to our network connectivity. I request each and every one of you to kindly bear with us. Our IT department has been working very hard in order to resolve these issues. So once again, kindly bear with us in case we face uh, such kind of difficulties. And now to begin with, I request Peter T. Kent, youth pastor, Rengma Baptist Church, Sovima, to invoke the Lord's blessing. Let's all look to God in prayer. God of the heavens and the earth, to you I come in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Despite the lockdown due to the global pandemic, I thank you for this auspicious moment of the Tso College, particularly for the graduating class of 2020, the 320 graduates from various disciplines. God, our Heavenly Father, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the success and achievements of our students who are at the moment in different parts of Nagaland and beyond, prepare our minds and our hearts and remind us that you are the source of all wisdom and understanding. Remind us, O oh Lord, that you lay the foundations of the earth by your wisdom and set the heavens by your understanding. Remind us that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And yes, there were times when the students came in as freshers, toiled, and burned their midnight oils. Now, as you have given them your grace, your wisdom, understanding and confidence in their respective disciplines as graduates i give you all honor god our father irrespective of where we may be at the moment may your sweet presence move us during this short graduation ceremony instilling in our minds and hearts that your thoughts and your ways are beyond ours. And yes, Lord, you have surprised us with 100% past percentage. Many top 20s and three gold medals. For all this, we give you all glory. As the students prepare to receive their certificates and walk out as graduates, move the hearts one more time, O oh Lord. And help them to make stronger resolutions to strive for excellence. Give them also your grace to be on top in all aspects of their life. May they walk out as instruments and advocates of peace, justice, liberty, equality and fraternity of all humankind irrespective of race religion perspectives and status thank you lord for not only blessing the Tso college with excellent infrastructure and human resources but also once again blessing it with excellent performance 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kent, for the prayer. We shall now listen to a beautiful song by Im Kong Chung Zuk of BA Third Semester, Political Science Honors. I can almost see that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, You'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My fate is shaking, but I gotta keep trying, gotta keep my head down. There's always gonna be another mountain. All is gonna wanna make it move All is gonna be an uphill battle Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose And about how fast I get there And about what's waiting on the other side It's the cloud The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking Sometimes might knock me down, but no, I'm not breaking I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm gonna remember most, yeah Just gotta keep going, and I gotta be strong just keep pushing Whoa No, there's gonna be another mountain No, there's gonna wanna make it move No, there's gonna be an uphill battle Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose And about how fast I get there And about what's waiting on the other side All is gonna be another mountain All is gonna wanna make it move All is gonna be an uphill battle Somebody's gonna have to lose And about how fast I get to And about what's waiting on the other side It's the cloud is titled The Climb. Beautifully sung. Uh, thank you, Im Kong Tung Zuk. I now give time to our Vice Principal, Dr. Hewasa Loring, for the welcome address. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me fine. Um, I'd like to begin with respect to chairperson, principal, 
our esteemed special guest and commencement speaker for today, Dr. Dolly Kikon, Senior Lecturer in Anthropology and Development Studies from the University of Melbourne. Thank you so much, Dr. Kikon, for being here with us on this very special day. My dear staff, students, and parents of the students who might be watching with us this morning, alumni who may be present too, and most importantly, the graduation the graduating batch of 2020. I am extremely pleased this morning to be addressing all of you at this graduation ceremony meant for the undergraduate batch of 2020. And I take this privilege to warmly welcome each and every one of you online. The Tissot family has put together a simple yet heartfelt online program before we send off our graduates into the world to pursue your dreams further. And though, of course, we deeply wish that we could be doing this in person, but owing to the circumstances, we could not. And so instead, we decided to seize this opportunity and try our best to provide you all with a befitting graduation ceremony. So we did manage to bring one of the best Naga academicians, an accomplished woman, making a mark all over the world to address you all of to address all of you today, Dr. Dolly Kikon. And we do have some special performances by our students too. Before I proceed further there, though, I do hope that each and every one of you are in the best of your health and that you're all doing fine during this pandemic. To the graduating batch, I hope you are now ready to take on the challenges and opportunities that this ever-changing and mysterious world keeps on presenting to us. About the graduating batch, we have about 320 undergraduate students who are graduating this time. And these students have completed their BA program in the general and honors course in education, economics, English, sociology, history, and political science. And we also have students from the BCom program who have graduated in general and their honors course in accounts and finance and management. I'm so proud this year to announce that all the departments have managed to secure 100% pass percentage at the undergraduate level. The result is the accumulation of all the six semesters put together. Many of our students have also figured in the top 20 rank of the list of Nagaland University in different departments. And three of our students are the university gold medalists in their respective departments. We have Heli Gumle from Education, Honors, Wenu Meru from Sociology Honors, and Monbeni K. Izong for Economics Honors, all of whom will be introduced to you in much more depth by the department heads in a short while from now. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Now I would like to take a moment to warmly welcome Dolly, Dr. Dolly Kikor, our commencement speaker this morning into our midst. Dr. Kikon, we have long awaited for a day to have you here at Tissot College, and we feel very fortunate this morning that you are able to join us online all the way from Melbourne. You are a role model for many of us here and a representative of Nagaland to the whole world, and we do extend our best wishes to you and all of your upcoming projects. We feel that we could not have had anyone more appropriate than you to be addressing the graduating batch of 2020 today. To the teachers who have toiled and worked so hard and have also witnessed an unprecedented final semester with their students this year, I welcome you heartily to this online graduation ceremony. This program is as much as it is for you as it is for your students, as you get to see the fruits of your hard labor to witness your students graduating today. Thank you all for all that you do for your students and your contribution to education at large. To the parents who are present here with us this morning, thank you for trusting in the ability of the Tetsuo family to mentor, mold, and guide your child as we took up this task along with you. We warmly welcome you to this graduation ceremony, and I do hope you get to catch a glimpse of your daughter, your son, or your ward at the virtual graduation march that will be played shortly after this. Today, I also have the honor of releasing two publications of the Tissot College 
to mark the significance of graduation day. The first one is volume eight of the annual journal publication of Tetsuo College. It is called the Tetsuo Interdisciplinary Journal. The Tetsuo Interdisciplinary Journal is an annual academic journal that promotes interdisciplinary research to explore new insights and perspectives in diverse disciplines to foster higher education. I now present to you volume eight of the Tetsuo Interdisciplinary Journal. The theme for volume eight was on popular culture. The carefully handpicked articles in this journal examine popular culture from the lens of politics, power politics, mass culture, media representation, gender, and it also discusses stereotypes in our contemporary society. I congratulate the journal editors and everyone who played their part in this pursuit towards promoting academic research and knowledge. The second publication I am proud to be releasing is volume six of the Department of English's ebook titled Resonance. It is a Tetsuo College anthology of art and literature. The English department has worked really hard on this ebook project meant for educational and learning purposes. It is a beautiful collection of art, poetry, and prose by notable authors including students and staff of Tetsuo College. Here I present to you volume six of the ebook, Reasoning. And I'd like to congratulate the chief editor, Ms. Nisha Dahia, and the managing editor, Mr. Anjan Beira, along with their team of associate and assistant editors for bringing out this ebook. The ebook will be available on the college website after the graduation ceremony for downloading and viewing. Now, before I conclude, I would like to end with a brief message for the graduating batch. I feel like this morning I'm addressing the most special batch of students we've ever had in this institute, especially for students to be graduating in a challenging time like this. Special more so because you have weathered through an unexpected turn of events this year. With your last few days of college summed up with online classes, the end semester online exams, you're having online farewells, and you're all now at the stage in life where you are expected to move forward to an unknown, yet it is, I assure you, a promising future. And it will be more, even more promising, depending on the decisions and choices that you, along with your families and mentors, will now make for yourself. I sincerely hope that your years at Pizzo College have allowed you to discover yourself and begin the journey of figuring out what the purpose of your life is meant for. And as we have been repeatedly saying over the years at Pizzo, this journey of life is continuous. It is a journey of striving for excellence every single day. And it is a journey of constantly creating a positive impact wherever you may be. You have already begun doing that during your time here at Tetsuo College. And I do hope that each one of you can proudly and confidently step out into the world with a skill and a tool that you have learned from your teachers, your classmates, your friends, or even the experiences that you've had here at Tetsuo College and put it into good use. We are also proud of you and your hard work, and we urge you to continue to work hard and do the absolute best that you can with honesty and integrity, no matter what others may say or whatever the circumstances may be at times. Make sure you know how to filter out the best advice too and stay focused on your goals. Keep dreaming big, think big, and do big. All the very best to each and every one of you and may God be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hewasa. Indeed, our students have over and again proven their worth and shown us their caliber. In the next segment, we will be presenting a video. However, just a note, uh, regretfully, some of our students could not submit your photos, but do remember this video is a celebration of the success of each and every one of you. Okay, so the following students have been evaluated by Nagaland University and are hereby found qualified to be awarded the Bachelor's Degree of Arts and Commerce, presenting the virtual march.
Now that everyone is our class of 2020, congratulations. I now call upon the department heads to introduce the gold medalists of our graduating batch. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Elika from the Department of English and the Dean of the College. I'm delighted to introduce Haile Gumle of Education Honors and the rank number one gold medalist of Nagaland University undergraduate examination 2020 with a CGPA of 6.59. Haile Gumle completed her higher secondary studies with a first division percentage of 81.20 in 2017. During her higher secondary studies, she participated at the district level students science seminar organized by the district education department in Perrin. And her topic, innovations in agriculture for a sustainable future prospect and challenges was awarded first position in the science exhibition category. After joining Tetsu College, Haile Gumle continued to excel in her academics, particularly in her writing and speaking skills. And her teachers have noted an exceptional improvement in her analytical ability. She has participated in many events, as well as presented an original paper titled, Youth as an Agent of Change in an interdepartmental seminar. She has also contributed an article titled, How Can We Find Happiness to the Degree of Thought Column. Her teachers and classmates remark on her notable punctuality and discipline in the college. As a student, her department teachers also find her sincerity, dedication, and good character as commendable and exemplary. The department teachers, peers, and the entire college community are immensely proud of her performance during this undergraduate examinations and wish her all the best for her future endeavors. We hope that Haile Gumle will continue to bear witness as a beacon of excellence wherever and whichever path she chooses. Congratulations once again. Thank you for the time. I am Sepung Sanglawaling, Assistant Professor and Department in Charge of Sociology, and I am proud to introduce the gold medalist in sociology. When you Meru is sincere, committed, and is a humble and bright student. She always draws inspiration from the quote of Eugene Bell Jr. Aspire to inspire before you expire. And with that, her academic achievement from higher secondary till college is excellent. She graduated her higher secondary with a first division and has been consistently scoring well in her degree classes. She scored a CGPA of 6.86 thus securing herself the gold medal in sociology. Wenny, as we know her, is a surprise package. From the views of her teachers, she has been a sincere student from the beginning and is always enthusiastic to learn. She was also always regular in the class. Simple living and high thinking perfectly define her. Her life is definitely with a purpose says one of her broad teachers. From the platforms that Tetsu College provided, she was ever ready to contribute her skills in the events organized. She is a student who is good in, in academics and has contributed in co-curricular activities as well. She hosted and actively took part in college and departmental events. The Department of Sociology is so proud to have had her as one of our students to guide and mold and help bring more laurels to the department. We believe she will be an inspiration for many more to follow in her footsteps. She completed a group research work and presented on the topic, influence of social media on younger generation in Naka society in the intra-departmental seminar organized by the Department of Sociology. Apart from the college activities, she was also a Sunday school teacher at Mission International Church, Timapur. She aspires to be a civil servant in the future and serve the people. I, on behalf of the Department of Sociology and Tetsu College, congratulate her for bringing laurels and glory to the college and the department. We wish her the 
best in her endeavor. With success comes more responsibility, so we wish her to acquire more knowledge, be wise, excel in her future roles, and contribute to the future well-being of our society. Best wishes. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Deva Pratashuddha, Assistant Professor and Department in Church, Department of Economics, Tatsu College. I am honored and pleased to welcome Ms. Monbini Izun, gold medalist in BA Economics with CGPA of 6.87. She is a very intelligent, sincere, punctual, and disciplined student. She secured ninth rank in higher secondary examination conducted by NBSE. She was also the recipient of 100% Tatsu Merit Scholarship. She has been consistently securing SGPA of six and above. She was very active in the departmental activities and took lead on organizing many activities uh, on many occasions. She is a spiritual person and she was an active member of the College Evangelical Union. She was the Information Secretary of College EU. She shares a great bond with teacher, fellow classmates, and juniors. I had the honor to guide her project and title, Impact of MG and Rega on Beneficiaries in Longsa Village, Oka District, Nagaland. I found her to be active and hardworking and had the attitude to do the best. I was very much impressed with her analytical and writing skills, and she had the attitude of completing the tasks before the deadline. Lastly, on behalf of the department, I want to congrat congratulate her for bringing Lawrence to the department and the college. I hope her success will motivate many more students in future. We wish her the best of luck in all her future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you to our department hats and congratulations once again, Haley Gumley, Wenyu Mero, and Monbeni K. Izum. And now for the valedict valedictorian expression, I call upon Monbeni Izum. Honorable special guests, respected principal, vice principal, the deans, the jury, and my friends. Before I commence my speech, I would like to thank our almighty God for his blessing because of whom I'm standing here as the Nagaland University Gold Medalist for Economics. I would also like to thank my family, the management, teachers, and my friends for your constant support, love, and prayers. Today, I am honored, excited, and privileged to be standing here giving out, a, giving out speech as your valedictorian. Three years, I dubbed in my, three years ago, I dubbed in my higher secondary and I was offered a merit scholarship at Tetsu College. The moment I stepped into this college, I knew this was the best for me and I also knew I could achieve my dreams here. Back then, I was young but deeply frightened, confused fresher who was shy, lacking confidence and did not know how to stand for myself or for others. Tetsu have provided me with all the opportunities I needed to shape and mold myself. Tetsu have been my home for three years, and during this time, Tetsu has shaped, inspired, challenged, and even introduced me to friends I would love for life. Talking about my friends, at first I did not know I would meet such an amazing friend out here who would always encourage and motivate me to study harder and to achieve my goals. I consider myself very lucky to have joined Tetsu and to have met you all. Today is our graduation day, and it marks the end of another important and extraordinary chapters in our life. With this chapter now closing, I am certain that many of us are anxious about our next chapter because unlike a book which we can read and flip, we do not know what our next chapter would be. But my friends, let us know that we ourselves are the author of the book of our life, and it depends on us how we want our story to go. Our hard work and sacrifices will bring us our happy ending. You all have been doing your best, so continue to do you are special and I wish you best for your future endeavors. Do my juniors, a piece of advice I would like to give to you is to stay focused and to do your best at what you do. At the end, the mark you score does not really matter if you have given your best. We all have potentials, but our excuses overpower our ability in achieving our dreams. Never let your excuses get in your way and success will come after you. 
Keep God first and He will lead your way. Lastly, I would like to say that I am forever indebted to all my teachers here at Tetsu. You are the best and you have been doing a phenomenal job in making sure we the students receive a quality education and achieve our best. Thank you so much for your efforts and helping us become a better version of ourselves. My dear friends, as we go on to the next chapter of our life, I know that we shall always be proud to have been part of that soft family. Let's achieve greater heights and truly strive for excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Mon Benny. I hope the next chapter for each and every one of you is one that is filled with success. And now, before I give time to our commencement speaker, let me give a brief introduction about Dolly Kikon. Um, Dolly Kikon is a well-known academician from India's northeastern hill state, Nagaland. She is a senior lecturer at the Anthropology and Development Studies Program, Melbourne University, India. Her work focuses on the political economy of extractive resources, militarization, migration, development initiatives, gender relations, food cultures, and human rights in India. Before coming to the University of Melbourne, Dr. Kikon led an interdisciplinary research project at the Department of Social, Social Anthropology, Stockholm University. Her work focused on the increasing trend of out-migration among upland societies in Northeast India. Prior to obtaining her doctoral degree in anthropology from Stanford University, Dr. Kikon worked as a human rights lawyer and a community organizer in India. Focusing on land rights among tribal communities in Northeast India, her legal advocacy works extensively dealt with constitutional provision, Article 371A, with regard to land and resource ownership, as well as the sixth schedule of Indian constitution that deals with autonomy arrangements for securing ethnic rights and guarantees in Northeast India. Her human rights advocacy work continues to focus on the repealing of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act 1958, an extra constitutional regulation that provides impunity to armed forces in India. From 2020 to 2022, she holds a joint appointment as a senior research advisor at the Australia India Institute in Melbourne. Dr. Kikon is the author of Life and Dignity, Women's Testimonies of Sexual Violence in Dimapur, Nagaland, and Living with Oil and Coal, Resource Politics and Militarization in Northeast India. Together with Bangji Carlson, she has co-authored Living the Land, Indigenous Migration and Effective Labor in India. Her forthcoming book, co-authored with Duncan Magdura, Ceasefire City, Militarism, Capitalism and Urbanism in Dimapur is slated for release in January 2021. We are delighted and honored to have Dr. Dolly Kikon as our commencement speaker today. Ma'am, please take the time. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a delight. So when I was offered the privilege to join the Tetsu family, am I loud enough? I think I usually have problems uh, sometimes not being loud enough. So is that okay? Can someone give me a thumbs up? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, let's get this going. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, to the principal of Tetsu College, Dr. P.S. Lauren, all the faculty members and the administrative staff, thank you for inviting me to address the graduating class of 2020. Hello, graduating class. How are you all feeling? What a day, right? What a joyful day. A very warm greeting to you all. And thank you for making me a part of this important day in your life and for giving me the privilege to reflect together on this very important transition. This is a defining moment in your life and you will reflect back on this day, this moment, the beginning of a new journey, like many of your teachers say, and of many, many journeys altogether. Dear faculty of Tetsu College, alumni and family of students studying and graduating from this distinguished institute, I feel honored that you consider my life and my journey as something that might inspire and instill hope in the class of 2020. I feel blessed and humbled when I reflect on my own journey so far. I am zooming in from Australia today, as you know. I work at the University of Melbourne 
and I got my PhD from Stanford University in California. Then I did my postdoctoral fellowship at the Stockholm University, Department of Social Anthropology in Sweden. For a little girl from Nagaland who grew up with a single mom, struggling to make ends meet, this has not been a bad journey, let me tell you so far. So I am totally as foreign educated as you can imagine. I hold degrees that appear like a perfect Christmas gift, like a perfect birthday gift, a perfect green wedding gift. Graduating class of 2020, your life will take you to places, perhaps to places where I have been or to new places, and I hope it will be a blessed journey you will have. After all the degrees that I have attained and the places I saw across continents, I come to you to share some, not all, I still have a lot more to live, hopefully, God blesses me with long life, to share today some of the lessons I've learned so far in my life's journey. The secrets and the defining moments that remind me of my place in the world and who I am among our blessed Naga community and an international community today. I will always be the little girl from Dimapur. My parents divorced in 1985, and I was oblivious of what would that mean for a small Naga girl growing up with a single mom in a Naga society. What it would mean to witness loved ones, parents, family members, relatives, and cousins struggle with addiction, with alcohol, with stigma, and domestic violence. Being ostracized for belonging to an alcoholic family and witnessing my mother always struggle to make ends meet would mean that as a young child, I wanted to escape into a place where I imagined things to be different. And I could do that only in my mind, where I was able to forget the reality that confined me as a child as reject of a society where the standards and bars of a good family, a good mother, a good father, did not align with the reality I encountered every day. The bar and expectation that Naga society set for me as a little girl in Dimapur, Nagaland was the lowest one. I studied in Christian English school. I did my high secondary in Patkai before I left for Delhi. When I was studying as a child in Christian in this school, I was a quiet student on the outside, but on the inside, I always felt I was not good enough. I took on the violence and shame and addiction I witnessed around me. I did receive, though, a lot of help from elders in the society. My uncles, neighbors, elders, and the society at large did an exceptional job of reminding about the pathetic reality of my family and the gossips were never ending. When I was in class six, something happened. One day, there was a surprise essay competition in the class and the prize money was 10 rupees. Given how comfortable I was in my imaginative world as a child, I wrote a story and gave it my all. That following week, the teacher came in and returned her essay notebook. She said that the prize was inserted inside the pages of the winner's notebook. I sat in the second last bench in a class of around 50 kids. By the time the turn came for the backbenchers to collect their notebooks, more than half of the class realized that the prize was missing from their notebooks. Imagine the excitement and the number of heads turned towards the backbenchers. That moment of excitement for finding the prize money was good for many students in the class, but I could see their faces and their eyes gazing in disbelief that someone among the backbenchers would get that prize. When I got my notebook, I was nervous. I started checking the pages and my world stopped. I saw the prize that 10 rupees note, and I felt, oh my, this does feel good. The 10 rupees in my hand, class six, that recognition. 
it was that moment that the fire of determination was ignited in my soul and in my heart as a child. I realized there were no rules that I needed to come from a good family to compete. I had discovered this secret. And every time I scored well, I taught the subject, the class, oh man, did it feel good. Studying from a home where the filtered water always ran dry because there were parties who required more water than alcohol to feed into their glass. Or in the house where some drunk would come in and eat my lunch when I got back from school, gave me even more reason to escape into my books and the world I felt when I won the 10 degrees prize. Over the decades, I have competed and achieved fellowships and grants at an international and a national level. I got a full fellowship to study at Stanford University, and today I have zero student loan. And I found myself, as I became an adult, as someone who had a competitive spirit, but that increasingly made me unhappy. I only knew joy when I won, when I achieved. And that also meant that inside I was really miserable or becoming miserable over the years. One day not long ago, when I was a student, I visited the British Library in London for my research work. I photocopied some documents and carried it back to Northeast India. One day, a senior research Follow asked me if I would share some of the documents with him. I resented. Why should I? Why should anyone ask me for what was mine, what I had done, for what I had achieved, for documents from the British Library? I had worked so hard to get it. I had become this miserable, competitive, success-driven person. I wondered, who is this person? What are her values? What is her truth? And what is her meaning in life? As a scholar today, I attend many conferences, I give talks, I do workshops, I write books and articles that are considered as important by my peers in the academy and in the policy world. Today, I can do all that because I had to confront the truth about myself during a time that I would call the post-British library years. I had become attached to an illusion that success and feeling great was connected to moments of winning. This mirror of myself, the Stanford branded self and the miserable resentment self led me to a path of self-discovery. A journey of the self, of introspection, of purpose, of meditation, of meaning, and of prayer, of staring at my ego, looking into my pretensions. I saw the limits of success. The path to seek the truth made me realize that in life, we all reach a plateau. The bar that I had set as a little girl in class six in Dimapur had only got me so far. To grow up and tell my story that children from violent and alcoholic families can make it, and I still do that. And that's my reason why I'm such a strong advocate of violence against women, of gender violence, and of finding safe homes and spaces for children from violent um, families. But I also realized that at every transition in our lives, we have to remap the meaning of our lives. I realize that it is not true that our desires and dreams are only as good as we are able to measure them. Today, when I wonder and imagine the meaning and purpose of my life, it is beyond degrees and the knowledge that I produce as a professional academy. I believe that instead of the spotlight and the limelight to which I'm not attracted anymore. I have begun to strive towards a floodlight, as bright and radiant as, as the star where every single of us share the joy and fellowship of working and walking together. 
instead of letting brands like degrees and fashion coming from quote unquote good families of heritage families wear me and my identity, I believe that love, forgiveness, courage, and compassion are timeless and the most important brands for humanity to practice. Tetzel College graduates in class of 2020, remember the quest to discover that a life lived in the spirit and wisdom cannot be held within a finite bar or measure. That every morning is a golden day filled with seconds, with minutes and hours to discover why we should strive to love, to serve, to speak for justice and work towards a world free of violence. That is a moment of the 10 rupee price. That is a moment to realize that the 10 rupee price has the ability to change someone's life forever. The meaning of who you are, the priceless life you possess right now today, the power of your youth and the potential you hold is immeasurable. Remember, seek a path that allows you to discover who you are. Meditate about the purpose of your life and never forget the power of your life, the story you hold in your hand. Tell them, tell them to the world with courage, with humility and with deep wisdom. Live wise and live well, graduating class of 2020. And May these Gallic blessings that I say now at the end of my speech be with you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine upon your face. May the rains fields fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you all and all the best for your journey. Thank you. Beautifully said, ma'am. You have come a long way from where you started. We could not have a more fitting commencement speaker than you. Thank you for sharing with us your experiences, your struggles, and your amazing journey. Thank you so much, Dr. Dolly Kikon. And now for the note of appreciation, I request Anjan K. Bera, Assistant Dean, School of Humanities, Business and Economics to take the time. Uh, hello everyone, a, a very good morning to all of you. We have uh, attendees joining in from three platforms today, Google Meet, YouTube Live, as well as the Meet stream that is going on live. So I, uh, I'm thankful for all of you for being uh, here as a part of this event. We are so glad to be hosting this event, this graduation day 2020 online this year. Now, what is interesting is that when our results were out, our students, my students, the first thing they asked me was, sir, when is this graduation day going to be held? I understand the enthusiasm with which many of you are attending this event even today. Uh, 10 years back, I had my own my own graduation day and it was really exciting and so i'm really happy that for such a joyous occasion we had dr dolly kikon as our commencement our commencement speaker uh, for today thank you so much ma'am for joining us all the way from australia we are really proud of all the amazing work you have been doing out there and your contributions to to academics it was a privilege and honor, dear ma'am, to hear you speak today. And I do hope that in the days to come, we will get a chance to meet you in person and hear you speak. And I'm sure your speech today has been truly inspiring to all our graduating students. I would also like to thank the participants of the program today, Peter T. Kent, the youth pastor of RBC, Im Kong Tong Zook, the third semester for his melodious song. I'd also like to thank our principal, vice principal, our director and dean for their guidance and support, and all my team members for this event, the various staff and faculty members who have come together in various capacities and have assisted and helped to make this event a success. 
And, uh, and of course, since the event is online automatically and by default, we definitely need to thank the ID team who has done a tremendous and fabulous job of pulling everything everything together from the poster to these videos and making sure that the event flows smoothly. Thank you so much to the ID team of Tetsuo College. Now, all the current students of Tetsuo College who are attending this event, I do hope that this event has been inspiring for you and we look forward to see the great laurels that you will achieve in the year, in the months, in the years to come. We have great expectations from you and we believe in your potentials. Finally, I would like to thank all the various, the various attendees, the parents, the well-wishers, our teachers and staff, and of course, the graduating class of 2020. Congratulations, you have finished your course amid so much of uncertainty with the global with this global pandemic going on. You should be proud of yourselves for finishing this, this degree and moving on to the next chapter of your life. Your presence has warmed this event and made it a success. Dear students, you know this, we are going to miss you so much on campus, but at the same time, we cannot wait to see the great things that you are hereby going on to, to achieve. Please remember that wherever you go from here onwards, you will always be a part of the Tetsuo family. And please continue to strive for excellence. Thank you so much, everyone. Back to the chairperson. Thank you, Anjan. That was beautiful. And yes, uh, dear students, as even as you leave Tetsuo College and you prepare yourself to step into a new adventure, it is our hope that yes, you will continue to strive for excellence. All right. And now I invite you to take a trip with us in reliving some of the best moments of the graduating class of 2020.
How amazing was that? These cherished memories we have with us over 2,500 attendees watching this event from various platforms. Thank you everyone for being a part of our virtual graduation day. And with this, we have come to the end. I wish each and every one of you the very best. Have a wonderful day and please stay safe everyone. Thank you.